Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to MLS Journeyman with Zebu Nation. We are of course with Inter Miami and we finally got to the preseason. Uh, you know, been putting the roster together, been adding a bunch of different players, had all kinds of draft, well not all kinds of drafts, we had one draft and we've had a bunch of other signings we'll get to in a minute, but we are still putting on some finishing touches, we're still looking for of course Another designated player, if that's even possible, I'm not sure. We got Connor Shanoski here. We're going to criticize his training. Get out of here. Yes, that's fine. Um, but yeah, we're still looking for a couple of key pieces. We got some good, uh, good tips in the comments section about who to go after and who to who to try. A lot of those guys are just at this point are not available in one way or another so I think the top choice top suggestion was Chicharito of course everybody knows him he's he's been um, he's been rumored to be coming to MLS like for a couple of years now maybe three years uh, it hasn't quite happened and I don't think it's going to happen because he keeps getting signed uh, overseas and he keeps staying there for example he recently just signed to Sevilla for eight and a half million. Well, that was what he was sold to them from West Ham. So I tried to, I tried to bargain for him, and they were just not having it. You know, they just paid eight and a half million for him, so they were really not interested in selling him whatsoever. Um, the other thing about him, I mean, he's still good. He's still very good. He's 32 years old, so it's a little bit on the older end of things. But if you look at his information. He's still only a one-star reputation. So, you know, if this is like one of the best guys we could get and he's only one star, then I don't know that he's really going to help our cause that much if the board is going to be looking at, you know, if they want three-star world reputation, then we're just out of luck. There's just no way we could do that. Uh, so, anyway, um, you know, another guy was uh, David Villa. He's retired in this database so we couldn't find him and we, you know we just had all kinds of issues so still looking but I think we're very, very I know we're very close to signing at least one guy and we'll take a look at the transfers you can see what I'm talking about so we got some uh, upcoming transfers you know our one of our mantras for the club one of the things we're supposed to do is also find young players that we can sell on so I went around the world looking at like any available like 17 year olds we found a few um, this guy is our best guy Matthias Sabalos right back I think he'll have five star potential when he gets here you know he's pretty good only 17 years old all these guys are 17 years old Sergio Gonzalez right winger you know a player for the future again I think he's gonna have four star potential and then we've got Alejandro Hernandez striker I think he's also going to have four-star potential when he gets here from Costa Rica. But these guys are joining much later, uh, even next year, because you know they, they're from different parts of the world that have different, uh, different rules for when they can transfer. So anyway, we're getting those three guys. We're also signed uh, Syed Abdul Salam on a free transfer that wasn't really free. We'll look at that in a minute, but he's another fullback. This roster is like, we're so low on fullbacks. I've just been spending half the offseason trying to sign fullbacks. And he was available. He was out there on a free, sort of. He, his rights were still owned by another MLS club, so we had to trade for the rights to get this guy. So we did that. But he's 6'4", 16 jumping reach. You know, he'll be able to play aerial defense out there. He's also pretty good everywhere else. I'm not sure he's going to be like a starter for us or anything like that. I'm pretty sure he's not going to be a starter for us. But he is a valuable backup. He can play left or right side. Uh, yeah, so that's what we've got incoming on the transfer market. When it comes to trades, you can see we've got a lot of trades that have been denied in one form or another. But we got one that's coming in, and it is... Sort of a valuable player here, Jordi 
Reyna from New York City, valued at 4.3 million, making 713k, which is a little high, but it's not bad. You know, I've been trying to sign players, and it looks like the most the board is going to let me offer anybody is 1.3 million. And they're not going to let me offer the third designated player slot. They're only going to let us have two DP slots. So this is kind of the top range of guy we can get. Overpaid for him maybe a little bit. Giving up a first round pick, an international slot, and $3.8 million in allocation money. Which is fine. We've got a, a truckload of allocation money, so it's not that big a deal. But, you know, Jordi Reyna is one of those guys we've been looking for. I'm probably going to play him at either striker or attacking center mid, depending on how the team plays. At this point, we're going to start him out as striker and see how he goes. Um, we're not going to play him at right wing, of course, because we already have that filled up by uh, Vialba. But uh, other than that, he's a very fine player, very quick, 17 acceleration, you know, decent flair, decent technicals. He's just, you know, a very solid top end MLS player. And if we look at his information he's a one-star guy so he's like as as much reputation as chicharito so i guess this is the best this is the best we're going to be able to do at least this season maybe if we if we make some noise maybe next season we'll be able to to do something a little better we have had other transfers of course uh we should probably look at probably should look at other trades first before we get into the drafts and whatnot because these sort of affect the drafts so first of all you can see here that we did trade away one of our top picks in fact our very top pick fourth pick in the MLS super draft because honestly we didn't need we didn't need that caliber of rookie it might sound strange but if you pick a guy fourth overall in the super draft he's gonna want to start and everybody's going to want you to have him in the starting lineup. But we don't really need a rookie in the starting lineup. We need high-profile players in the starting lineup. So I traded away that fourth pick, which is something I would never do in an, in an ordinary save. But we traded that away for three lower picks, two second-round picks and a third-round pick, plus 325 k in allocation money. That might not be the best deal in the world for a top-five pick, but it's it's pretty decent and it fits our need of getting multiple l later round picks so that was pretty good and we also did a few wheeling and dealing here to get some backup players we picked up dante Seely, another youngster 17 year old american striker you know he's okay he's got 14 first touch 14 dribbling only 10 finishing 11 composure so maybe he's not perfect as a striker maybe it could train him up as an attacking center mid even though his passing is terrible. Anyway, he's 17 years old. We're just trying to build up that youth recruitment because we just we have no youth recruitment at this point. There's the trade for the rights for Abdul Salam. Just cost us a fourth round pick in 2023, so basically nothing. Picked up Donovan Pines for a third round pick and 50k in allocation. He's a decent player, 22 year old central defender, reserve type guy. Another big powerful defender six foot five 200 pounds 17 jumping reach 14 pace as well so he's big strong athletic guy i mean he's pretty good for an mls defender 13 heading 12 marking 12 tackling he's got some potential only 22 years old if this guy was in the super draft again he'd be a number one pick and we got him for a third round pick essentially and then sort of a, you know, an iffy trade here. We traded away a first round pick in 2023, which again is a long way away. We probably, we might not be here, probably won't be here, honestly, with uh, Inter Miami at that point. But we did pick up Nico Devera in 190K. Nico Devera, 24 year old, fullback, left back. I'm not super happy with this guy, but we were kind of desperate at the time looking for any sort of fullbacks that we could get our hands on, especially left backs. Very, just very slim pickings at this point. He, you know, he's only five foot five, but he's got decent strength and jumping reach for a guy that size. Um, he's he's a reserve. He's a backup guy, but you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And the reason we had to go out and make a lot of these picks, especially defensively, a lot of these trades, I mean, is because 
the MLS Super Draft, there was a total dearth of defensive players. There was just so few that we basically picked all offensive players in the Super Draft and, uh, you know, went defensively on the free agent market and trades. So we can take a look at our Super Draft, which, which is where we left off in the last episode. So our first pick, which was 11th overall, so still not a bad pick, was this guy here, Phil Hederovich. Right winger, only 20 years old. Good potential. Four stars, maybe five stars. Um, you know, just decent, solid overall guy. Okay, quickness and acceleration, agility. You know, he's got some decent mental attributes, determination, flair, leadership, teamwork. Very good. Technically, he's a little low, but not too bad. You know, everything is in the six, seven, eight, nine range, so he can he can boost those up by a couple of points and be a pretty decent MLS player. You know, or we can trade him, or we can sell him, because that's another thing. Like I mentioned earlier, we're looking to sell young players, and he's still 20 years old. So if we could get a million bucks for this guy or more, then that might uh, appease the board. Then, like I said. Seven picks after that. They don't really put the picks in order here. I wish they would do that. I wish they would have your, your draft picks in order, but they do not. Let's see. We picked up Adrian Stewart, attacking center mid, 21 years old. Decent. You know, he, he doesn't have a ton of potential, perhaps. You know, maybe he has four-star potential, but I don't know. He's got good first touch, good flair, good speed. You know, we always love to find fast players. He can play a lot of different positions, too, so that's always good. Alexis Miles. 21 years old. Again, not a tremendous amount of potential. I think he was like a third round pick. But uh, another striker, 14 finishing, 16 bravery, composure, very good mental attributes, 14 flair, 14 work rate. So, you know, this guy could work his way into some goals. If he can just get in front of net, he should be able to score some goals. Luis Angel Ruiz, Mexican American in the Super Draft, 21 years old. Pretty, you know, similar to the other guys. He can play left or right midfield, which, you know, if we go to that 4-4-2, four, four, he, he could get some playing time as, as a midfielder. Graham White, another striker. Like I said, they were all strikers, all attacking players in this super draft. But he was an interesting dude. He's one of our last picks, 21 years old. Uh, you know, 5-11, decent physicals, crazy mentals. I mean, 15 aggression, 17 flair, 17 teamwork, 17 work rate. Those are monster numbers for MLS. And then he's got 15 heading to go along with that. So I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he can score some goals heading, even though he's only 5'11". Maybe he can be an assist man. I don't know. But uh, we signed him. I think we sent him down to Inter Miami 2. Let's see. Aiden Figuera. He was one of our earlier picks. I think he was a second round pick. Defensive midfielder or central midfielder, a lot of potential for this kid. He is 21 years old, so he's a little bit old, but uh, it's not too bad. Decent physicals, pretty good mentals, you know, work rate, teamwork, determination. Okay technicals, but, you know, he's just, we needed more midfielders, more center midfielders. And so this guy is probably going to play. Uh, let's see, David Tran, our final pick here. Another attacking center mid slash central mid. Great free kick taking, leadership, flair, determination, teamwork, work rate. So again, we just had a strong mental crew. He's also got pretty decent speed as well. So I think that's one of the things you get when you build your team with super draft players is you get guys who are fairly mentally fit because they've been to college, I guess. They're, so they've got that boost to their mental attributes. I guess that's how it works. And then we also had two other real transfers if you will that were brought in by the general manager and they're actually pretty decent they're actually pretty good pickups Shaq Moore for 900k a right back which we needed desperately this guy's going to be our starter at right back you know excellent physical speed stamina <laughs> stamina all that sort of stuff excellent mentals concentration you know a lot of green going on there Decent enough technicals, a lot of 11s and 10s. So, yeah, good, good pickup by the general manager. Happy about that. And then another one, Alexis Mendez from Ajax, 20-year-old American. So another one of those guys that could be worth some money later on. 
Decent physicals. Again, very good mentals. 16 determination, flair, leadership, work rate, all very good. And he's pretty decent technically as well. Technique passing, long shots, which is important for the way we play. Free kick taking, first touch, you know. He's probably going to be our starter at center mid. So we got some interesting players to look at. we got a lot of players to look at. This is basically, um, let's see, how have we done so far? We've had some interesting games. Had some interesting teams that offered friendlies. Like, I didn't go after any of these. All these just came up on the schedule. So a lot of Peruvian teams for one reason or another. Atletico Nacional, Colombian. First place currently in the Colombian League. We beat them 2-0. And then Cristal. Uh, I think they're the first Peruvian. Yeah, so there they are. They're from Peru. Currently seventh in their league. But, you know, they were a decent team. They were a pretty good team. Drew with them nil-nil. And then Juan Arich, which was our last game that we just played. We actually beat them 1-0, even though we had a straight red card from Norman. Look at that. Straight red. In like uh, for in the first half, when was that? In 44 minutes. So right at the end of the half, he got straight red. I was not happy about that, but we managed to hold on. Hector Vialba got the goal, of course. Uh, yeah, and they're another Peruvian team. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. And then today's opponent, likewise, Peruvian team. So we've just been touring Peru, even though they've all been coming to play us up here in Miami so I don't know maybe it's just like vacation time in Peru they're like hey let's all take a vacation go up to Miami you know cruise around why not it sounds like a good vacation to me all you have to do is play in a game play in a friendly and we managed to beat well we haven't managed to beat them yet but hopefully we will now after this game we're gonna have a little bit more usual friendlies some uh, MLS teams and then some of the larger Minor league teams, Phoenix and Austin, both of those guys are sort of fighting for places in the next expansion. I believe Austin has already been announced that they're going to be an expansion team. I forgot what year it is, but one of these years coming up, Austin will be in the league. So those kind of teams always like to play friendlies against MLS to sort of gauge themselves. All right, so we got a lot of friendlies go up, going up. Let's get to the match preview right now. Inter Miami versus Real Garcilaso. Probably not how you pronounce that. We're going to go with it anyway. We got old Uncle Ted as the referee. Let's get started. So here we are. We're going to go with the Z formation. Got a bit of an interesting lineup. We got some guys on the bench. We got our two best defenders on the bench, Trusty and Burnbaum. That's going to be our starting central defense. But uh, Trusty. Played in the last game and has not really recovered. Look at that. He's at 85%. So I don't know what his deal is. If he's got like fitness problems or what. I mean, he does have 11 natural fitness. That's a little low, but not that low. He's got 15 stamina. I don't know what his deal is. Burnbaum's coming off an injury, so he's still a little unfit. Same for Shinovsky. So we're thin, thin, thin defensively. We're going to have Vialba on the bench. Um... You know, we're going to have some some of the names that you've seen recently in some of those trades and uh, Super Draft. We're going to have those guys in the lineup. So Sean Johnson's going to take the captain's armband today. You know, we had some chances to get some bigger name goalkeepers, but it's just redundant because we have Sean Johnson. He's good enough. We don't really need a bigger name than him. But here we go. We are going with the Z formation. They're going 4-4-2. Four, four, uh, their captain, Ormeño, up top here, Santiago. Don't know anything about these guys. But here's our lineup. Johnson in goal. Devera on the left. Moore on the right. So we got Shaquille O'Neal Moore on the right. Pines and Banos in uh, central defense. Banos is sort of a guy. He's going to be our, our everyman on the back line he can play all four positions so we're gonna have him back there a little mad at uh, you know our guy who got the red card so Norman so we got Louis Philippe is gonna play uh, Segundo then there's Mendez at uh, center mid Pellegrini 
our young designated player. Interesting to see how this guy does. So far, he's played pretty well. He, he gives us a big spark down the left-hand side. And when you team him with Bialba on the right, that makes uh, you know pretty interesting team up. We got Tran in the middle, our our super draft pick, one of them. Mackenzie Gaines, another young player on this team. I don't think we've looked at him much, but he's a super interesting guy. American, good potential, good ability. Currently, you know, if this was another save, I'd be starting this guy for sure. I never would have gone after Vialba if I had this guy on my team. Because you know he's got the potential, he's got the ability. I'd be playing this guy right away. So I don't know if uh, Miami's going to be playing him in the real world, but I think they should. I think he's pretty good. But for us, he's going to be on the bench at least for this season. On the right wing and then up top, young striker Julian Carranza. Currently our number one striker, but about to be our number two striker. Again, we're going to be replacing him with uh, Jordi Reyna, which I probably would not do in another save, and we might not in this save. We might move Reyna down to attacking center mid or play two strikers. That's also a possibility. So let's get to the match, and let's dressing room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand over to the assistant. Let's go kick off. We don't need to get too serious. Here we are at the sort of brand new rebuilt stadium what sort of uh, highlights do we got here we got key highlights that's fine oh here we go we got a key highlight right off the bat johnson so this is sort of our possession attacking style they are pressing and they have forced a turnover at midfield here comes real garcaliso garcaliso anyway boots it downfield carranza cannot get there let's see can we get a turnover in the defensive side of things? Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. They're, uh, they're carrying on. This is a long highlight. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Both teams are trying to test the other defenses. Banos, Banos with a mix-up, but Johnson is there. I mean, he recovered well. So he couldn't quite handle that ball, but he did recover well. So, I mean, Johnson was there to bail him out, but still. All right, here we go. Mendez across midfield. Tran. We got our all gray uniforms on today. Shadmore. Shackmore, I mean. <laughs> Moving down the right-hand side. He sends in a cross. Good ball. Can't quite get to it. And here comes Real on the counterattack. Yera across midfield. Sends it to the near side. Carbajal. Looking to get by the defense. Cannot. There's more. The big tackle. Big tackle. Start the counterattack. Get it forward. There he goes. He sends it forward. Foul up there by Ovedo. Tran has it. Tran plays it forward. It's a. It's just. Okay. I mean. Comedy of errors. But Carranza pounces on it and gets the goal. This is preseason football, ladies and gentlemen. Defenders just bad touch. Tran. A. Lazy pass there. Ruiz, I don't know what that touch was. I think he was trying to tap it back to the goalkeeper, which he should not have done. So just give it to Carranza for uh, pouncing on that. And that's why I haven't really... I would, I would not have replaced this guy as a starter, and I still might not, if we weren't looking for, you know, higher value dudes. All right, here's Gaines. Can't... Make a run down the near side. Ruiz pumps it to midfield. No, there's Banos. Good play there. Oh, great pass to Carranza off the post. You know, he outfought that defender for the ball. That was a good play by the youngster. Still only 17, 18 years old. Okay, 36 minutes. A lot of highlights. A lot of highlights for one goal. Oof. They beat our back line there with some nifty passing. Oh. My heart just stopped there. Good play. And here we are on the counterattack. Tran, super draft pick, has to slow it up. Gets it to Moore. Okay. How's Moore doing out there? Pretty good. 24 years old. Oh, here we go. You know, we should probably start sending it long these guys are really pressing us but 
If we can do this all day, Carranza seems to have a great matchup with that central defender. Can't get the goal. But he's just pushing that defender around. And we get a corner out of it. Mendez on the far side. Sends it in. Okay, that's fine. Lopez. So I'm trying to get back in the swing of recording things here. First half, uh, you know, pretty good. Seven shots to four, only two on target. Had that one that hit the post, that probably should have been a goal. They do have more of the possession. So we could look at our tactics. And there's two things that we can do with our tactics. We can either go less direct or more direct. One of two things. So you could look at it and say, well, they have more possession, so let's just go more direct and uh, you know go with the flow or we could try to break the flow and take more possession i think um you know i think staying direct is fine so i don't think we'll actually do anything <laughs> as great coaching great coaching just just don't do anything just you know i'm happy with your performance so far keep it up it's fine it's fine Pines with six interceptions in the first half. That's pretty good. So he's a he's a solid reserve choice. I think he'd be our first central defender off the bench. There's a turnover to Gaines. Going to get a highlight here right after break. Tran, can he get the cross? He cannot. Gaines got a little bit of foot speed. Can he fight for it? No, nope, he's double covered there. Not a great looking counterattack here from Real. Moore. Gets it to Mendez. See what the young 20-year-old can do. He's got to develop a partnership with one of our def uh, defensive midfielders. Hopefully it is Philippe, but we'll see. There's a big shot from Mendez. That's what I mentioned when we brought him in, that long shooting. I think that's going to be a, a real weapon for us. One of the reasons why I want to start him, see if he can get some goals for us. You know, if we can get five or six goals from him this year, I think that'd be pretty good. You know, I don't think we're going to have... I don't think we're going to have a problem scoring goals with um, Vialba on one side, Pellegrini on the other, and then Reyna and Carranza uh, up the middle. I think that's going to you know, be a pretty good offense. And then if we can add a few goals for Mendez as well, that could take us, you know, that could make us a playoff team for sure. Here we go. Pine sends one forward. Romano tries to get behind the defense and it looks like he does. Aragon. No. The uh, the Ranger from Lord of the Rings tried to get behind our defense, but did not work. Alright, so Moore is a little tough. Hired, make a sub. Uh, yeah, we don't really have much going on in the way of right back, so we're gonna move Banos out to right back. That's his. That's what he brings, honestly. That's what he brings to us is that versatility. And then I think we'll bring Burnbaum in, get him a little bit of playing time, get him, you know, a little bit warmed up there. And then, uh, let's see, we can bring in Norman for Philippe, who's a little tired. Left wing, Sander Comfort. Here's a guy we haven't talked about much. 22 years old, left winger. He's a decent guy. Uh, I think we got him, I think we traded for him last year. Uh, or the, the previous coaching staff traded for this guy last year. He's pretty decent. He's a decent young player. Again, this was a different save i'd be looking to get this guy into the lineup a lot more so we're gonna put him in there southern comfort going in at left and then uh, you know we'll, we'll save that for now think okay now <laughs> oh got a highlight going on now we're gonna bring Celia in for carranza See if we can get our third goal here. See if we can put the nail in the coffin. Burn bomb to Pines, who just boots it. Gaines can't get underneath it. Carbajal sends it to nobody. 
Great header from Gaines. But now, right now we're just sort of ping-ponging back and forth. Big hole in the defense. Ormeño. No, can't get by Johnson. I don't think these guys just have the quality in them to beat Johnson one-on-one. -on -one. They've brought in a bunch of their reserves right now. Yeah, I mean, good Ormeño. He's okay, but not good enough. There we go. Full-time, 15 shots, four on target. Pretty good. 52% possession. So, again, just don't do anything. Just don't mess it up. Don't, you know, you've been practicing all week the same tactics. Let's just go with those tactics. Don't mess it. Don't mess around at halftime. Don't get creative at halftime. Just do what you do and get the win. 2 0. Very happy. Let's go. Continue. So yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle to record things over the last month or so, just you know, with the holidays and everything. So hopefully I can get back on track. Hopefully I can just start hammering out some recording sessions. You know, I I'd kind of wanted to do some different things this year. You know, maybe add some more uh, interesting things. But for now, with my schedule as it is, I've just gotta I just gotta record things and put them up. Well, otherwise I'm never gonna be able to record anything if I try to put too much effort into it it's just gonna get bogged down and I'm not gonna have time to do it so that's gonna be the end for today we're gonna you know come back probably for our first MLS game against Colorado I don't think the roster is gonna change too much especially if that Yordi Reyna transfer goes through if we look at our our squad and our uh, registration is what I'm looking for. Please, thank you. There we go, registration. We're pretty much at the top. We got 28 players. You know, salary is decent. We're probably going to have to spend some of our allocation money to get uh, Reyna in under the cap. If we look at our finances right now, we got plenty of room, plenty of pay payroll. We're only spending $7.5 which is still a little high for this team as for as far as what it is to be paying seven and a half million is a little high but we've got a huge payroll 26 million uh 14 million in the bank one and a half transfer budget take a look at the league specific real quick uh we still have 9.75 million in allocation money so no problems there we can fit we can f double our roster value and still <laughs> still be able to afford it so there we go that's where we're at preseason. We'll get to MLS season preview in our next episode. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.